Okay, guys, back on the throttle body injection, Mission Impossible. We are on the 26th cut, and haters rejoice. It was a complete failure. What did I do? Well, I changed the, the angle of the helix, trying to make the two paths up the ramp and around the helix meet How can I say this? The vector addition of the two flows will be more similar instead of directly against each other, canceling each other out. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's been a rough couple of days. In any case, it was a failure. Um, I've got some strange chunking in, in the in the chamber, but the rest of the liquid looks good in the chamber. Let's take a look at the bore. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm really not upset with that. It is important, though, that the port didn't sound as happy. That's an important point. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, that liquid looks basically the same as it was. This looks... I think a touch better. It looks really nice and wide. Now let's take a look inside. Let's look look down his throat first, then I'll show you what I did. Okay, you can see all of our rust because this was poured. I have to go over that because you probably won't believe it, but this looks pretty good. We still have nice coverage over the whole chamber. And in fact, you know what's an interesting point? Come on, focus on this part I want you to focus on. This angle has changed. It was straight. Now it's leaning this way a little bit. That's an interesting point. Okay, let's move. Okay, I've got multiple light sources so we can hopefully see something. But I will show you what I did. It's not going to be easy to show you actually, but I'm going to try. This ramp here has been changed, okay? Whereas before, we can look at a stalker. Okay, that has a constant, oh, wrong side. This has got constant uh, angle all the way down. This one doesn't, okay? So what I did is I removed metal all along this whole ramp to about here, and then from here up changes drastically because I want the air to be aimed this way more. Well, it doesn't look good as far as flows, and uh, we'll take a we'll take a good look at it. Uh, in any case, we knew we were about at the tipping point where we were because uh, in reality these were these are hanging right with two twenty and. 230 darts and AFRs. And it's a swirl head. It's the worst head in existence, right, guys? So let's take a look at uh, a different view of this and then go to the numbers. Okay, I think I got the lighting fairly good with that. Yeah, you can see some rust in there, so what? But as far as our liquid is concerned, it's not bad. I think it was a little better last, last cut. And our flows were a little better last cut. So let's compare them now. Okay. So how'd we do? This was our 25th cut. This is our 26th cut. And the only thing I did was I changed helix to merge with ramp different. Okay. How'd we do? Well, these pluses and minuses are in reference to our last cut. Minus, 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 plus, plus, minus, minus. Loser. Loser. Not happening. Take a look at how big a, a downer we are. Ouch. Painful. All right, how'd we do as our swirl? Well, it increased our swirl. Now, to me, I don't, I don't know what the hell is happening there, but obviously what turbulence we are causing is going, is aiding the swirl. Very strange. Uh, uh, I don't know what else to say. I have to think about it. I have to think about what's going on. I don't... It's not 
instantly apparent to me what's happening. Now, does it... Does it bother me that the swirl went up? Well, you got to remember, it made 3,500 RPM completely stock. So this curve is not that far off from stock as far as swirl. Now, on a high-performance engine, I believe this is too much swirl. This may be as well, but it's not as much as this. I mean... This is a big difference. This is a th almost a thousand RPM difference here. Okay, that's a huge difference. Let's see, we're 3230. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. 2652. That's a big difference. All right, let's take a look at our, our air speeds in the port, see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, now as far as our air speeds, this is our 25th cut. This is our 26th cut. What happened with our pinch? Well, it got faster on the roof of the pinch, got faster in the middle, and lost some at the bottom. But we're also flowing less air. So, interesting. Now, this this really is different here. Take a look at this, right? Center of the cylinder only changed a couple numbers, but look at what happened to the cylinder wall side of the roof. It really dropped. In fact, it was going between 43 and 0. How can you have zero airspeed on a port that's got 28 inches across it? Well, it is possible. That's basically a dead spot at that point. Now, could we fill that and try it again? We could. I don't know if I want to do that. That would be an interesting experiment. I have to think about that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of at the point where I'm thinking of just jamming a, a 2.1 in it on a 45, because I have a 2.1 with a 45 angle, I'm not going to cut it for a 50. And try it. This port is pretty much cooked as far as I'm concerned. You know, I did make I did make a note. This was our best curve before the helix change. That way I can keep everything straight in my little tiny brain. Let's take a look at our short side. Plus, plus, plus. Okay, so the helix change made it harder for air to go around the helix and out and forced more air across the short side. Which you would think would drop the swirl, but in, instead it increased the swirl. In any case, Port was not happy. Charlie's not happy. And we are going to move on from that point. You know, they can't all be winners. So my haters will have a cold one tonight thinking about how Charlie lost. Enjoy it, guys. Doesn't happen often. In any case, I think I'm going to cut these for the bigger valve. I don't think I'm going to fool with filling that roof or anything. But the next one I do with a big valve, I don't think I'm going to knock. I'm not going to knock the cylinder head bolt out. And I'm not going to raise the roof pretty much to the limit like I did on these. I didn't explain to you about the size. This is a 228 cc port before I changed the helix on the ramp, which probably added a cc or two. Okay, the chamber is quite big, 74.5. Now I remember the ones I did in the 80s came right out about 69, which was a 64 cc chamber that was modified. Well, these were the, the 64 cc chamber but they've been opened up to the 400 size so they're quite they're quite a bit bigger that doesn't mean we can't mill it and get some of those cc's back and our exhaust is a relatively small 66 cc's okay we are going to what i think i'm going to do is i have some time this afternoon i'm going to cut it for a 2.1 and i'm going to redo the exhaust for a 1.5 550. I have to find a valve I can ruin for the uh, the exhaust and mill that down and get that set up. So I've got quite a bit quite a bit of work to do before I can make the next video for you guys. All right, guys, I got stuff to do, and failure just kind of knocks the wind out of my sails. So I got to get going. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.